second panel on this inaugural day of the new wild geese. In, in this particular discussion, we're focusing on Irish family history, a.k.a. genealogy, trying to gain insights and connections back to our venerable ancestors in the old country. And leading the panel is our colleague, Alana Ryan, who has a huge interest and in reservoir of knowledge on Irish family history. She comes at it from some very interesting ways, including DNA, which is becoming very trendy, actually, and mainstream. And without much further ado, I'm going to turn you, everyone, this over to Alana, and she can introduce our, our panel, uh, hopefully shortly to be panelists. Alana, Kate Miela Falcher. <laughs> thank you, Henry. Uh, thank you, uh, Jerry. I was thinking of Henry because uh, uh, there's Nicola. Um, Nicola, can you hear us? I can't hear anything. You can't hear anything. Okay. I've unmuted um, it. Okay. Um, Jerry, can you send uh, Nicola a chat message and let her know? Now unmute it. Please. Yes. Um, okay, so we're just going to, ha we've been having technical difficulties for the last right. um, 30 minutes here. I'm just letting um, Nicola know that we are broadcasting because um, Nicola is in Dublin and um, she, we were having some, oh, she's gone out, we're going to try to bring her back in again. So um, Nicola, the, uh, I'll start uh, for, fresh. Um, the reason I'm, I'm very happy about moderating this um, panel because yes, genealogy has been my passion for a very long time and yes, I do come from the perspective, um, a DNA perspective. And that is because I truly believe that we, um, <laughs> amongst all the things that we carry in our DNA, we also carry all the joys and all the suffering and all the experiences our ancestors did in our DNA. And I truly believe that each generation takes with them those experiences and have an opportunity to balance them out to bring some harmony within the DNA um, from all those uh, terrible experiences and all the joyful experiences. So um, I, I really, uh, we have a, 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 our panel is, is very exciting. I had a chance to talk to all of them yesterday and we all share the same passion and we all know that genealogy is one of those, um, let's say, some people call it a hobby, that um, is is just loaded with synchronicities and um, serendipity and experiences that that give you goosebumps and and make you tear up because it, it, it hits the heart because it is in our DNA so I, I believe our DNA responds to um, all the research that we're we go through and uh, my guest today I'm going to start with Ryan here if you can see Ryan O'Rourke and um, and and welcome, Ryan. Thanks, Lana. And we're working. Whereabouts are you located right now, Ryan? Uh, in Connemara, County Galway. That's right, because um, uh, Ryan is a a, a photographer with um, Irish Homeland Photography, and um, I'm going to let you explain your um, your services because. Uh, and with the genealogy um, aspect that uh, you have, because uh, it's a beautiful thing that you do, and and your experience um, uh, from your own genealogy and what you've been uh, what you've been uh, researching uh, all this time between America and Ireland. Well, uh, basically, what what I offer through my uh, photographic services is uh, for anyone who is of Irish heritage uh, to. To get them the, the 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 photographs, the images that um, that mean the most to them. In other words, um, the more someone knows about their their lineage, uh, where their people came from, both sides of the family, if, if that that may be the case, uh, if they can get me the, the most detailed information. Some people can only get me a, a town or even a city, you know, a, a larger town. Uh, some people though would know more and would be able to get me even a plot of land, a field, a, a little cottage that's in ruins or maybe still still there in, in partiality. And um, that's what I encourage people to do is to just research it down to the very, you know, to the, to the greatest detail they can so I can go to that exact place and get them the photos and just present them with a, a bunch of photos to choose from to complete a package. And then basically what I hope for that for them uh, as I present them those photos and, and they, they receive them 
is that they'll frame them and that they'll be something that they can pass down to their children and they, their grandchildren and, and great grandchildren because um, you know some people some people get over to Ireland to see it some people don't some people get to Ireland and take photos and then get home and then look at their album and say nah that's you know it doesn't really capture what it looked like um, you know it looks so much more spectacular in person and that's that's what I hope to do to be able to use the, the skills that I've acquired and uh, my experience to kind of capture um, what they're trying to say about their homeland so that's uh, that's that's what I do oh I, I, I love it because it's true there's so many of us myself included who have never been to Ireland after 12 years of, of researching and and with my challenges of having my ancestors having come over in the 1700s mm -hmm. and a time when they were having to move to a, a British location in Halifax, Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. and 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 of course wanting to go underground, basically like uh, play the game. They they couldn't have Irish churches. It was during penal times, mm -hmm. so they were doing everything underground. And I and I, I figured out that's why um, all my ancestors left Halifax as soon as they could, and populated the coastline of uh, fishing villages. And it's all Irish all along the coast, and the most beautiful property. And uh, they uh, they they were able to keep their their um, communities going. But again, they did not hand down where they came from. And and I suspect my county of Wexford. Um, I have suspected this for a long time. A few of us have. Our county of Wexford um, uh, ancestors arrived first. Started uh, buying property in. Uh, like 1800, right after the, right, and during, just post the 1798 rebellion. So we always suspected that might not be their real name, that they may have changed their name. They escaped, they came in, they didn't want the British to know who they were. They were, you know, all, uh, and they came through the states. We found some that, that might have come through the states. We still haven't proved that's who they were. Um, and then they'd have to sign a loyalty, you know, and there's, there's so many prior to the uh, the uh, immigration during the famine um, it was it was still even there's so few records and so you have your own sphere, uh, stories about that don't you that's right mine, mine also would have come over during the, the 1700s and um, and it's, it's kind of still a mystery right now because um, you know the name O'Rourke it was not a was not a Scots Irish name uh, it's very much a very much a Catholic you know Irish name. Uh, but um, they, they, my first, my last born Irish ancestor um, came over in the 1730s, you know, way before the largest wave of people from Ireland. That was mostly Scots-Irish immigrants. Um, and so, so like, like you, the, the records are scarce um, um, during that point for sure. But what, what I found was I was doing my paper trail, you know, from myself, my father, my grandfather, all the way back. And then I got stuck actually in the paper trail uh, in the mid-1800s, uh, one or two generations there. Uh, and I couldn't get past it, so I thought, well, <laughs> how am I going to solve this? I had no idea. And I don't remember how I uh, figured it out, but I, I re realized, hey, you know, DNA, there's a DNA option here. So that's what I did. I ordered a DNA kit and um, sent that away, and, and they sent me back the, the results, which were interesting. You know, it, you know, it kind of showed you some generalities and showed you people who were related to you in a certain, you know, a certain closeness or not closeness, whatever the case may be. Um, but it wasn't until I got to Ireland and I met Tyrone Bowes from um, Irish Origins, and we live not too far away now, um, came across him and he was able to help me uh, analyze my, my DNA results and narrow it down to the point where he knows within a five kilometer radius exactly where uh, my people originated, basically. Um, so that, that was really the breakthrough for me. So that's, that's what I encourage people to do. Like, it doesn't... I won't say this; it's true across the board, but um, it doesn't necessarily matter if if you get stuck on your paper trail and can't get past it. If if the records just mm -hmm. never existed or vanished, you know, not the end of the world. Okay, uh, someone like Nicola can can probably help you a lot there. But even mm -hmm. if the record doesn't exist, um, like like as far as I can tell, is the case with me. Um, do your DNA, and um, and and somebody somebody like. Um, uh, Tyrone or, or someone else can help you with that, and um, and that that's what I want people to do, is if if they just generally know, oh, I heard my grandfather say that you know his grandfather came from County Cork or something like that. Well, that's good, uh, but but you need to know more than that. You want to know more than that, and the, yes. the, the, the more you can know, uh, the more I can help you get 
photographs, beautiful photographs of exactly what you want, of exactly the place where they lived, worked, played, fought, died, all this stuff. So, so that's that's what I you know know as much as you can. Help me help you basically to to quote Jerry Maguire. I, I just want to interject what what we've been flashing behind Ryan's voiceover is his is Ireland Homeland Photography's website and it, of course you might have seen a glimpse of some of Ryan's stunning work and of course now you can see his story uh, on as, as it's emblazoned across his, his About Us page but I did want to interject right now ongoing through the day in fact is we're running two contests to do wild geese one is a we're looking to reward the most popular article explaining or laying out one's own particular Irish story or or some compelling aspect of the Irish experience as, as our writer has come to know it. So uh, we would invite you to participate. Ryan has been kind enough to provide the top prizes for that contest and for a second contest we're running, uh, which is the, the most compelling freeze frame of the Irish experience, again, from your personal filter, if you will. So. Ryan is also providing the the pack the custom photo package to reward the most popular photo that embodies the Irish experience, and that contest is ongoing. It's only available to members of the newwildgeese.com, and it requires membership, in fact, to participate and use, utilize our our new site to to record record and share that. So, I just wanted to make that brief commercial, and I'll. I'll Turn, turn proceedings back over to you, Laura. Thank you, Jerry. Um, Ryan, I, I, I just wanted to also add to your story because when you mentioned Dr. Tyrone um, uh, Bowers on uh, Irish origins, when um, I ran into his um, site when he was first starting it, and he hardly had anything on his web page, and I got him into an interview for the Wild Geese. And we have it on our on our um, it's on the uh, blog site, and uh, it was it was fascinating uh, what uh, he discovered, and and so I mentioned to him exactly what you and I were just talking about is that I had uh, we have no way of getting this information from um, our Peter Martin of 1749 Galway who helped found the city. And so he said, if you could get a, a, a sample, you know, if you can get a DNA test to me. Of course, I have no, um, uh, in, I have no, um, of none of these relatives in my uh, Ontario area or any male relatives. So, uh, but a distant, distant cousin who's been helping me do this research back in Halifax had had his Y DNA test done. So he sent it to, uh, got the information to uh, Tyrone, who came back with this amazing. Um, results of linking us to um, the Maxwells and the Ramses of the border country who were with um, uh, who came through who were known to have come through to Ireland fighting with the with the Scotch and um, the other thing he, he opened up for me was this like you said the land he opened up the migration of mm -hmm. of of the DNA and I, I found that extremely um, interesting. It, it just it, it, it actually brought it home even closer to me because now I wasn't just looking in Galway, which we like Adrian Martin, um, uh, who's the uh, historian for for the uh, uh, Galway Martin clan. He he couldn't find any record of our Martins, and so the whole rumor that has been handed down for 250 years just was not panning out. And so I got him. I got. Um, Adrian and Dr. Tyrone Bowles together in um, in Galway, and they sat over a pint discussing all of this. Meanwhile, I'm back here in Canada in the snow, not wanting to be in Ireland, and I'm hooking everybody up. And so, yeah, I I, I really would like to have your one of your packages and have something that I know is mine. You know, something that helps. So um, I'm really excited about your, uh, your, your project and I hope that people join in on the contest because uh, they could win uh, some of your packages and I think that's great. And yeah, we well, have, um, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was, I was just going to say that, um, you know, when, when I was still living in America and before I made even my first trip over, you know, as a, as a holiday or vacation, um, and what, I kind of mentioned this on my website, you know, it's, Unless, you're, unless your family lived, you know, on the edge of the Cliffs of Moher or in Blarney Castle or, you know, in Dublin Castle or one of the really, really well-known 
much, much photographed areas of Ireland. Um, most of us came from, you know, a much more off the beaten path area, and there's not going to be that many really good photographs of exactly where our family, our ancestors lived. There's just not that many. I, believe me, I, you know, I looked, you know, for, for years. I looked for, for good photographs from where I thought, and it turns out they did come from. Um, you know, there's, there's a few things out there, none of them all that great, you know, so that's, that's kind of what I'm hoping um, to help people with, is to give them exactly what they want, what they're looking for, to connect with exactly the spot and make them really, really nice photographs, kind of emotion-stirring type images that, that will be kept in the family for generations. Okay. Oh, Warren, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Nicola, can you hear me? I can hear you fine now. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, I am going to have been very excited about um, uh, all of my guests, but uh, Nicola is, um, I, 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 you may recognize Nicola Morris. Uh, she is from, let me get back to her bio here to introduce her correctly. Um, her company is called Timeline Research. No, Timeline. Timeline. There it is. Timeline.ie. There we go. Timeline.ie. Timeline. Jerry's bringing it up on the screen right now. Um, together uh, with uh, Dr. Robert Somerville Woodward, um, Nicola and, and, and Robert have 20 years' experience in the fields of genealogy and history, are both members of the APGI or the Association of Professional Genealogists in Ireland, which is the accrediting body in Ireland for genealogists, and they're both associate researchers for the Irish Ancestry Research Centre at the University of Limerick. Now, you, some of you may recognize Nicola because she has appeared on um, a number of the uh, who do you think you are episodes in the UK and the US. She was on the one with uh, Rosie O'Donnell who that was an emotional episode where Rosie went to one of the workhouses and she was also on with Graham Norton which, which must have been a hoot and Chris Moyle's uh, episode but also my, one of my favorite episodes which was with uh, Jeremy Irons um, and Nicola welcome. Where are, you, where are you calling us from today? I'm here in Dublin on a very wet and rainy day, rainy afternoon. Yay! Uh, that brings me a visual. I happy. I'm I'm in six feet of snow, so uh, <laughs> I, I'll take your rainy Dublin any day. Yes, we call um, it a soft day. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there was something we when we were talking the other day. There was something you um, uh, when we were chatting you you said and I really really appreciated you sharing that and that was about um, about your role as a genealogist in Ireland today. Well I think because so many more records are coming online and particularly in Ireland so many more of our, our sources are coming online that a lot of people are really doing their doing the research for themselves. And so I think the role of a professional now is, is partly in empowering people to be able to do that work for themselves, to, to sort of guide them through the records that are available. Um, perhaps until they get to a much further point down the road when they're really, really stuck and might need professional services. But for a lot of people, it is important to be able to do some of it yourself. You have much more ownership over the work then. And um, I think it I mean, it means more if you if you if you're the one that finds that important record, that important piece of information. I think um, it, it means an awful lot more when you've you've found it. Well, and you you actually help people to find the right resources because Ryan and I were talking about that too. The there are so many. There's paid resources, free resources, and for us who don't really have anything solid to look for. You know, joining up to all these websites and paying money just to, you know, hopefully find something, you can really go through your bank accounts. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Jerry's got the screenshot of it there. I have a guide to uh, researching your Irish ancestors online, which again identifies sites and um, what's useful and um, where to start, and so that you don't sort of, yeah, sign up to one big site pay for a year's subscription only to discover they actually don't have anything that's going to be relevant to you at least at this point in your research. Um, so it is, get try to get a handle on, on understanding what Irish records there are first, what's going to be important for your research first. For example, births, deaths and marriages in Ireland are online at familysearch.org so that's a free site. You can do all of your research there first 
those if your ancestors were born in Ireland after 1864 those are going to be the most vital records for you and they're not on any of the kind of the big the big websites that that the big subscription websites so it's things like that also um the national archives of ireland's policy in terms of publishing records online has been that they should be published for free so the 1901 and 1911 census again an, an vital resource for anybody with ancestors who were in Ireland at that time is available completely for free on the on the National Archives website and some of the other sources that they've published as well such as the Tithe the Plotment books again it's a land survey dating from the 1830s so it's much earlier it can be very vital for people who again who left Ireland during the famine the Tithe the Plotment books might be the only uh, record collection that's that, that's going to be valuable for you so there's plenty out there that's for free and it's 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 legitimate if you like. I mean, it's 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 been properly um, digitized and made available. Excellent. Um, I have another my own question, Jerry. Are there questions in the chat room? Because I have a couple of my own, of of course. Yes, I just had to uh, ungag myself. Hold on. Yeah, we have a <laughs> we have a question here. The, Nicola, do you have anything specific planned to for the gathering to take advantage of the focus the gathering's providing? Um, I'll be involved in 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 uh, so far one event which is going to be done in the in the Alihees Caves in in West Cork in September. But I've actually really just in the last two weeks sort of started to get a sense of, of momentum from the gathering. There's more people talking about coming to Ireland more people talking about their family history. I mean it's also been named as the year of family history uh, 2013 sort of along with the gathering. Uh, so it's starting to gain momentum now and there just seems to be a little bit of excitement about what what this summer is going to hold. It, it really sort of kicks off from St. Patrick's Day. I know it started in January but I think St. Patrick's Day really sees everything start. So next weekend uh, uh, I think we'll, we'll see a lot of interest and um, lots of really exciting events all over the country. Thank you for that. I do have, there's one more question that came in. Hold on as I work my nimble fingers to the bone here. Can, can you, uh, either Ryan or more likely Nicola, can you recommend a, a place for the DNA test that is often used in, by genealogists? Maybe Ryan has that. I don't, um, I don't know. Out of out of the companies that do it, I couldn't recommend one. The one, the one I the one I use, I'll tell you, the one I use was FamilyTreeDNA.com, and I mean, um, wouldn't wouldn't hesitate to recommend them. Um, fast turnaround, good reports, uh, and I think that's who I think that's who Tyrone usually it typically um, yeah. uses and recommends. So um, I know he's familiar with there. So if you have plans of, of, of using someone like Tyrone, which I highly recommend, if if you're going to get the DNA test. Use someone like Tyrone to help you analyze it, um, and he he recommends FamilyTreeDNA.com, and that's that's who I'd recommend as well. Okay, well, th thank you for that. In fact, I'll share that via our chat room on the new wildgeese.com. It's family, family what, Ryan? FamilyTreeDNA.com. Okay. Thank you. Was there another question, Jerry? No, that, that's what I'm seeing here. I guess I do have a question for you, Ryan. We talked about the thin places in the earlier panel, and where places where well, those of us with, with material substance can get glimpses into the life beyond the, the world we, we, we can experience with our with our senses, our direct senses. Have you, in your travels through Ireland, experienced any? Sense of being close to another another world, whether literally or or spiritually. Uh, just to, from my experience, it's it's just kind of a um, more of a for for me speaking personally now uh, a ro um, romantic kind of thing. Like uh, um, you know, you dream, you learn from an early age. Maybe you have Irish blood, and you know, you learn this about your grandparents, your great grandparents, and you, you always dream of of setting foot on Irish soil, and then you get there, and then it's it's an emotional experience um, for me, at least. Again, um, but but I, that, for me, that's the extent of it. Um, it's it's very moving. It's very emotional, especially when you get in the area where you know, or you think at least, uh, your family came from this area. 
and you're, you're putting your feet down on the same stones that they put their feet down on. Very emotional, and, and if you want, if, you know, I guess you'd call that a spiritual experience in some ways, but um, for me, that's what it would be, you know, limited to something like that. You know, I, I, would, I would share a, an anecdote. I, I, I was with my dad in Cal Calvary Cemetery here in New York City, which has to represent a mother load of family history. I think there are three quarters of a million individuals buried in the grave in the cemetery. It's the repository for most of the 19th century burials for the Archdiocese of New York, which encompassed Manhattan, the Bronx, and a few counties north. But my dad and I were walking to a ceremony there with regard commemorating the Irish and American Civil War, which we'll be talking about at noon, actually. But we happened to stumble over the grave of my dad's uncle, who we had no idea where he was buried. And again, there were three quarters of a million graves there. And he was a police officer who uh, took his own life in the back of a saloon. This is what we had heard with the service revolver. And we, we happened to stumble over his grave, which is an astounding... Wow, I'm getting goosebumps, Jerry. <laughs> Coincidence, yeah. And uh, his, his wife, my dad, always remembered was on the outs with the rest of the family. You know, it's a typical Irish family story, right? There's always in people, people, people who are in, people who are out. And for some reason, she wasn't tolerated easily by, by the other members of the extended family. And I'll, I'll never forget that. I, I, so I think there's definitely, in my, my experience, some undefinable siren calls to, to connect with people in, in, in our past. It's, it's, it's very difficult to explain to explain in, in, a, in a purely intellectual way. So I, I've, I've just always marveled at that particular experience. And my dad did as well. I mean, we literally almost tripped over this guy's gravestone. Wow. Nice one. But I'd have the same thing. And, and I, I get that when it's not even my own family or, or, or where they've come from. But for example, I was reading some uh, estate papers uh, a couple of months ago and the collection included letters written by tenants to the to the landowner requesting assistance during the famine and these letters while they weren't written by the individuals themselves they would have had them written for them but the voice is still there so the turn of phrase would have been particularly Irish the spelling wasn't exactly correct but this kind of the 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 requests they were making for clothing, for a little bit of money to buy food, for money to be able to go to America. I mean, that gave me goosebumps when I was sitting there holding in my hand a letter that was written over 150 years ago at a time when those that family were struggling and trying to find a way to just at least stay alive for another couple of months. Um, and and it's, it's so real when you get to touch those documents, you know. And even though I wasn't related to this person, it's still that history just sneaks up behind you and taps you on the shoulder and says, no, this really happened, and it, 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 it happened to people. You know, I would I just interject, too, another shameless plug. At 2 o'clock, we're talking about the sad legacy of Ireland's Collini and the Magdalene Laundries, and I, I was adopted as an infant, uh, and my, um, I, there so I, I guess my question to you, Nicola, is that uh, there are a lot of people who search for their birth parents, as I did, who make use of professional genealogists? Does that comprise a a significant part of your your business, your your clientele? It's a, it's a small part, and actually, because people who are undertaking that journey, it's a very um, it's a very emotional and and very personal uh, search that they're making. It's because we're aware of how difficult a search like that can be we don't tend to take on a lot of clients for that because it can cost a huge amount of money what they're asking for um, and there's no guarantee of any success so what we'd rather do would actually uh, give people advice on what they should be doing who they should be contacting where they should be looking and then if there are small things that we can do that are perhaps sort of more manageable for their budget then we can undertake them but um, it, it, it's I think you have to be very careful that you don't sort of charge people an awful lot of money, their expectations are very, very high, and you're only go you know that you're going to come back with a negative response or a negative result. So uh, I, I, I'd always be very careful about uh, undertaking that kind of research. Yeah, and just to elaborate, the reason why 
adoption ties in often with, with the Magdalene laundry phenomenon is because many, many of those young women were forced, coerced into relinquishing their children for adoption. So that, that's this, the, the link for me in bringing it up here. Yeah, that's right. And, and there's very sort of few records sort of prior to the 1950s or at least prior to the 1930s that, that documents these transactions, I suppose, uh, uh, which is what makes it very, very difficult for people. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that insight. Uh, Nicolo, um, that brought up another uh, question of mine, and uh, I think we touched on it the other day, um, dealing with uh, secrets in family histories, and how many, how many people in, in, in families don't want anyone digging into their history. I've, I've run across it a, a number of times where I've, I've, I've suggested to people, well, you know, take a, a microphone and a, a recorder and go and uh, record your 80-year-old great-grandmother's stories and get them before, you know, it's too late and you, and you have to go and pay money to go dig up that information where you could get her story down on, on, on record. But, but then they run into the people who are saying, no, we don't want you digging into that. I've I've had I've got people in my own extended genealogy family who have said they they their parents even their parents are saying they don't want them putting their trees up, they don't want anybody digging in and then we discover that stuff happened and they just cannot face it. That's one of the reasons that I really like the UK uh, who do you think you are shows is because they were there was many of them were were um, not afraid to bring up the, um, the the syphilis in their family, which you know until penicillin was uh, rampant, it was everywhere, and and uh, things like that where people were um, uh, hiding the secrets in their family. Genealogy brings that all out, and so it's shaking people up and having to make them face this the the shame that that we've been carrying in DNA, carrying down through stories. And, and I think it's helping because so many people are, are finding out that so many families have gone through the same thing. It's not just the poverty and the suffering, it's, it's dealing with like the Salini babies and all those babies that, the limbo babies that, that uh, you know, back bef when, when such a thing as purgatory existed and um, you, you know, if you hadn't been baptized you couldn't be buried in, in, in consecrated ground. So, all of these thousands and thousands of parents who were burying their children outside the fence. And now that property is, you know, being used for uh, subdivisions. And so these stories come forward and then all of a sudden the church says, oh, there, we, we didn't really mean that there was a, a purgatory. We, we, that wasn't our stand. And now, you know, things like that, like so many shameful stories were hanging on. And, and one of my lines, as I was mentioning, that um, I'm now doing a research, and I've got a discussion going on on the Wild Geese website where anyone who joins um, the Wild Geese can start their own discussion, start their own blog, get their own um, uh, Irish history uh, topic that they're passionate about um, on the site and get people uh, joining in. And mine is about the Irish children and orphans and um, uh, people, kids that were picked up in Dublin and sent to Liverpool from the sheltering homes and sent to the Liverpool sheltering homes who ended up getting caught up in this whole British home children's scheme that was just horrendous, sending all these children um, to uh, Canada and Australia and um, there, you know, and then all these descendants are trying to find the records of their family because they, they're not allowed to get them. And I'm waiting myself from Bernardo's for a package about my ancestor who I ended up finally realizing that because I couldn't find any information on him, and I too stumbled on his 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 gravesite. I didn't even know he existed. And through my research, I discovered that you know it sounds to me like this guy's hiding something. Nobody in his family knew who his mother, what his mother's name was. It seems, and all these records, and and all the he didn't know when he immigrated. And I went, this is suspicious. So I contacted Bernardo's, and they said they have him. They have his records, and. His name was spelt wrong. He was listed under a different name on the um, ship to Quebec back in the uh, late 1800s. So nobody's known this about him. And, and I think he carried that shame of being 
a, a child in that system and didn't want anybody to know, especially the, the family he was marrying into and, you know, so um, I bet you have run across stories like that too in your, in, in, in all your experience. Absolutely. We've 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 come across uh, quite a few and in some cases we have been able to um, there was one woman whose mother had been adopted we were able to establish where the child was uh, where the child had been born the register for the nursing home gave the child's mother but also gave the mother's address so we were able to identify who her grandmother's family were and then traced them forward and she was able to connect with um, I suppose cousins and second cousins uh, uh, that, she, that she never knew she had and the, the, there was an today people are much more open to uh, to accepting that you know that you can knock on the door now and say well I believe that my grandmother might have been related to your grandfather uh, and that I'm a child that she had that nobody knew about and in some cases you find that the family were aware of it and they're they're happy to talk talk about it and they're, they're happy that they're able to make that connection now and sadly in other cases there are still people who are keeping the door closed on that issue um, and, and aren't prepared to kind of make, make a connection with, with those with people who, who they might be related to but slowly I mean it almost feels like the the, the last ten years, uh, certainly through the eyes of a genealogist, that that Ireland is coming around to accepting uh, and putting behind it these this this shame that that has been around for 150 years. Uh, because it's not shame, you know. It's not something right. that we you know we it's should life. be ashamed of. It's, it's life. Fact, it's yeah. life. It's struggle. Um, everybody had their challenges, and and uh, I I think it's it's important that we acknowledge it. And it, I mean, it ties in again with the with the things like the civil war that there's so many families who just refused to, to talk about that, and it, it's understandable because of the damage that was done uh, to individuals and to to families. Um, but the, the sort of the whole thing tied together. People now seem to be able to talk about it and happy to talk about it, acknowledge that it happened, and and. Um, expand their families I suppose which is which is a good thing uh, that yes Henry um, from the um, first panel that we had going his um, this Ireland XO this Ireland reaching out is is a, an, an amazing um, organization that I, I I mean I've just become aware of myself and to have to, to understand that there are um, volunteers from every single county in Ireland ready to greet and host um, uh, us, you know, the diaspora from all over the world coming, you know, and not knowing anyone. Like, uh, if I came over there, I wouldn't know anybody. I wouldn't know um, uh, where to go or what to do or ha I don't have, like, family there, you know. So um, to have somebody opening their arms like that to, like, I think Jerry was saying, uh, sending kisses and hugs to uh, the diaspora to, you know, I mean, I... You know, I know that there was some um, uh, uh, controversy about, uh, you know, uh, money gets involved and stuff like that. But, you know, genealogy, family history, and, and, and uh, a tie to a land that has been known forever as, as being a mystical place of legend. And, and because of that, I think it affects everyone. And I really believe that this anything that can be done to 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 bring people there, to allow us to go back, to to invite us and and to 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 tighten that grip, um, I, I I'm really grateful for. I think it's 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 um, it's how it's you know in Ireland's there's a lot of people out there that have studied the um, uh, origins of our of mankind you know all our the, the stories from all different um, uh, nationalities and the, the, all the different histories and you know it, a lot always comes back to the Celts and comes back to the Ireland and and it's um, it's part of I think a lot of the world this tiny little island it's its history and its magic um, and uh, I think I'm going to have to, unfortunately, I, I apologize to everyone for all the technical uh, difficulties we had at the beginning. Um, 
uh, we um, and thank you for keep that you kept trying, Nicola, to get back in, and, and we got it working. I, I really appreciated this this time. Um, I want to ask you one more question. Um, what was it like working with Jeremy Irons? Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> He was very nice, and he was just—I mean—he was so excited about his story, and that, and that, and that. It was, it was wonderful to meet him and be part of, and be part of his story. So it was great. Yeah, he was so into it. I, I really enjoyed his. And for anybody who wants to know, you can watch them all on YouTube. So you don't have to. <laughs> in Canada, we can't get anything. I love my, you know, the UK stories, and uh, you know, we can't get them. So. So go to YouTube and watch all and watch Nicola's uh, episodes. In fact, how was the Rosie one? That was pretty emotional too. It was, yeah, and it was really exciting to have made that connection. Again, it was the famine period. It was really hard to find records. They make it look easy. It's not. We spent months trying to find that family, um, but it was. You know, again, it, it's making that that one single record that just puts your feet on the ground in Ireland, and you're able to say. This road, this path, this field could have been the same one that my ancestors were walking down 150 years ago or 200 years ago. And uh, it, it may seem small, but actually I think it, it means the world to a lot of people. Hmm. It does. And Ryan can get out there and take a picture of it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, hey, do you have I, anything else you want to say? Well, I just want to I was gonna flash up real quick on the screen when you were talking about the, um, the, the children who were died before they were baptized and all that and they were buried in those the cemeteries outside the gate we actually have right next to our house here right on on the on the sea there is a um, I'll pull it up here there's a one of those children's cemeteries and uh, this is a photo of of it here do you see that just double click on your screen oh, there, there, there. there, there it is, is. Start screen share, yeah and uh, that's that's right right on the sea there um, here in Connemara, and I could I could take a rock and throw that from my house right now. Wow! Um, but that's um, yeah, it's it's uh, really we didn't even know what that was when we first moved here, and then somebody explained what that was to us, and uh, somebody actually just not that long ago built a wall like a retaining wall there and put that cross up because um, what was happening was sadly you know it was just a, a plot of dirt, and every time the sea would come crashing in during you know. A, a big storm or something, a lot of the, unfortunately, sadly, a lot of the children's bodies that have been buried for a long time would wash into the sea. So somebody came along and built a retaining wall that you can't see there in that cross to mark it. And now uh, people go down there and visit. And, and it's actually some of the, the families that uh, buried children down at, at this spot still live in this little town that we live in. So it's, it's kind of it's sad, but it's kind of neat as well. Yeah, it really brings it home. Yeah. Well, you we're going to have uh, on our website. We have a blog f um, for this uh, genealogy panel, and we have uh, lots, tons of information about Ryan and the f his photography, and um, also the contest that he's involved in. We've got uh, connections for um, Nicola, so you can contact her if you've come into a, a you know a brick wall and uh, need to, some help with your Ireland research. We have, I mean, we're just opening this up to um, hands across the water to uh, bridge this gap between the diaspora and um, Ireland and we're really grateful that you could join us today. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you for having us and happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you too. <laughs>